Good afternoon and welcome to Real Talk with Tamara. As you guys come into the room, please hit the like button. Also, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel. Um, I hope that you guys are doing okay. I'm happy to be back. Uh, I had not been on here for like four days and that's because, as I said before, I had been um, out of town working. And when I got back home yesterday, I just wanted to recuperate, right? But on my journey, when I'm driving and stuff, when I have to drive out of town, um, on my way back, I, I like to, to ride and just think. And I was thinking about, you know, learn to drop the dead weight and ascend. I think so often, like when we have people in our camp, we forget that, you know, life is just, life is a journey, and I've always said, I feel like we was put here. Um, I think oftentimes we become so selfish. And of course, you should enjoy life. But I feel like we're all connected to other people. But sometimes because we're such given beings, we get tied up in the wrong people. And we can miss um, the good experiences of life. You know, we get caught up in trying to pull dead weight consistently um, trying to motivate people and then we end up getting stuck right they start to uh, uh, pull down your vibration and um, they start to they start to drain you and all of that stuff and I was thinking about you know learn when to drop the dead weight and move on right and I know some people get caught up in especially when they've had experiences with people that have drained uh, their anointing or whatever it is that you may call it and they go, oh, you know what? I ain't going to help nobody no more. I could never get caught up in saying anything like that. But what what I have said is, and what I'm learning to do, right, is when you feel people pulling on you, because I feel like in life, we're supposed to be consistently replenishing each other. I think that um, people can, if you don't even, even if you don't have the resources to pour back into people, when people are helping you, I think showing your gratitude and appreciation until you can pour back into them. Um, if you're supposed to, helps to refill them. But we get stuck uh, on, we get stuck sometimes with people who like to just pull, right? They just like to pull your energy, just take, take, take. And I think that's something uh, that selfishness, you know, I'm a take, I'm gonna I'm ride your back, I'm gonna I'm drain you. Um, Hey, that's a, that's a, you know, my, my grandma used to say, um, they say, if you find a fool, bump their head. Right. And I think that's something that, you know, we have to get away from because, uh, the, it's like the human, the human psyche, the, the human, um, um, the human mind, right. Living in this, that being in this human experience can become really sick. You know, when you find uh, good hearted people, good, good people, right which is extinct these days you should i know for me i gravitate to good people i go oh that's a good person right if i know that they are good people i just kind of gravitate to them because i don't really gravitate to people a whole lot because i'm very guarded right i go oh that's a good person and they i go um if i get to know them i go i hope i'm not you know being a pest or anything it's just that um i'm such a loner right because of people being so like just so dogmatic right um i go I, I just love the energy of good people but it's unfortunate now that when people see good people they go oh you know that's a fool i wonder if i can bump their head i'm gonna try to drain them and get everything i can get until you and they start draining at good people right that's why i like that saying um givers have to have limits because takers don't and when i say give you know i think people think you're talking about gifts and stuff like that for me i'm not talking i'm not necessarily talking about gifts i'm talking about a giver of your good energy sometimes a vampire vampires feed off of your good energy your good nature um you know when when i think when you're vibrating on a certain frequency um, your high energy, you're able to attain a lot of the things um, um, that you want. You know, you can walk into a, a place and get a contract, especially when your energy is high. And so vampires, for some reason, they like to feed off of that, right? They can feed off of that. And so that's why I say you have to 
be careful about who you allow in your space, right? Know when to drop the dead weight. You know, I think often for me, even sometimes in, in relationships, I've gotten, I've had for some reason, um, people to become jealous. Okay. Um, and instead of saying, you know what, I've, you know, I've met a, a person and, and this can happen with anyone. I've, I've met somebody, um, Hey, that's got a high energy and, um, we just, we just kind of, we just kind of jail. Cause sometimes, you know, even if a person does not match what you have, at some point you could still be floating on the same frequency and and before you know it you got it right i always said that two is better than one but instead you know people can uh be so low vibrational they become jealous sometimes you could be floating on that same frequency and then after a while if you feel like you have not gotten a foothold or whatever they become jealous and that energy that vibration starts to drop and if they are connected to you you could feel it you start feeling drained and all of that that's why i say get a dead weight from around you and ascend continuously ascend until you're able to connect with those people that's not going to keep you on the same plateau because as I said, two is better than one. So when you start um, um, meeting people that is supposed to be in your life, whether it's friendships or whatever, um, you are able to replenish each other, right? You're able to feed off of each other's high vibrations and energy and what you just continuously ascend, right? If you're not ascending, if you're not ascending and you start finding yourself being drained, um, because somebody is bitching all the time. Somebody has gotten jealous. Um, somebody in your life, if, if it's not conducive to, to where you're going, it's time to, to drop that. And you can love them. Sometimes you can love them. And go, oh, you know, I just I just want to love the I just I just want to love the insecurity out of them. Or, you know, I just I want to love the, the pain of what they've gone through. And I think as women, sometimes we have it really bad about that. We uh, feel like we're supposed to just save guys, right? You know, if they've gone through quite a bit and they've they've had issues and go, well, I just want to love the hurt out of them. I know, you know, um, that what what they're doing is not conducive to to where I'm going at this point. But if they can just catch or get a foothold of my love, I can just love them back to life. And we end up trying to breathe uh, life into a a, a dead corpse, right? And we all know that anything that is dead cannot come back to life. And so we start lowering our vibrations and vice versa with men too. When they get women that ain't no good for them, we start spending our time trying to breathe and resuscitate a dead body when you could be continuously ascending until you vibrate on a frequency where you meet. Uh, uh, a body that is full of life and full of energy, right? That you're supposed to be with. But sometimes we miss that because we've descended, okay? Um, the person is already on a high frequency and they fly right over us to somebody else. Because I do believe sometimes if you don't get about doing what you're supposed to do, you can miss the blessing. You can miss uh, what's for you. Doors close. Open doors don't stay open all the time. A door was made to be closed, right? And so if we get caught up in into stuff that is not conducive uh, to our future, sometimes we can miss out. And so that's why I say learn to drop the dead weight and ascend, you know, enjoy life. I was like I said, I was thinking about that. I was like, I, I think I'm going to just start taking like two trips a year. I'd already said that we was going to take my mother somewhere different every year. And I was like, I want to start doing something for myself, you know, um, taking a family vacation with my mama and my kids, which is something we do uh, mostly anyways, but I want to start doing something for me because oftentimes I don't like going places by myself. I would like to go with some of my girlfriends. And then when we get there, I'm by myself anyway. So I'm like, wherever the water is, that's where I'm at. Cause I like to meditate the water. I've always said, and that's why I've always loved to live around lakes and stuff like I do now. And I have a lake in the back of my house. I was like, um, I like sometimes standing in my kitchen window or uh, or uh, sitting in my bed, just looking um, at my um, at my lake, you know, and I always said, I believe that water has a language. It's like 
if I could start looking at the water and it's glistening and it's so beautiful. I don't know, my energy just started to rise, right? It's like I started getting ideas like rivers of flowing water. That's why I keep a journal by my bed and I just start writing down dates and writing stuff down. I tell people to do that all the time. I have so many journals and I love to go back and look at stuff that I wrote like two, three years ago, especially how I was feeling. That's how I'm able to put things into perspective. Sometimes I, I know in a relationship, this is what helped me to end a relationship. I was um, looking at my journal and it was, it was on, it was, it, it was, it should have been over anyways. Right. And I started looking at my journal. Right. And I was going back looking at from like three years. I was like, wow. Wow. And I'm just going and looking at what I jotted down. And I was like, okay, on May of this year, he made me feel a certain way. On July of, of, of this same year, he made me feel a certain way. On From October to December, it may have been good. Okay. On January of, of, of the next year, that, that was a pattern of it. I, I thought about, I was like, dog, and this year I'm feeling the same thing. I'm cutting it off. Okay. <laughs> I'm cutting it off. That's why it's good to keep your emotions in check and to write down stuff. I always feel like even if you have plans, write the vision down and make it plain. Okay. And I'm good about, I love doing that when I, I want something. I was, I was writing down some stuff the other day in my journal, right? And I was telling my mother uh, just this morning, I was like, I love it when I'm able to go back and check it and, and uh, you know, do checkoffs on it. I go back and look at what I had written down and I go, dog, I could check this off. I can check that off. I met this quota. I did that. Wow. It's amazing. Right. And so that's why you have to do things that are conducive to your progress in life. And if there's any dead weight right? If, if, if it's a relationship, I don't care how much you love them, even if it's family, drop the dead weight, the dead weight and ascend. Ascend, keep ascending so that you can vibrate on a frequency where there are people that is conducive to where you are going so that y'all can ascend together. And when it's time to break off, because some relationships are just for uh, a season. Hey, you might they might ascend, but they go left and you continuously ascend and go right. Or they might stay on their frequency for a little while, but you're continuously ascending and you're grateful for whatever they was able to bring. But at least you're on a higher frequency where you're being um, 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 conducive to your livelihood, right? Um, to your journey on, on this on this side of the earth. I don't know about nobody else, but what I was saying, I was saying what I was thinking about was uh, what I was getting ready to say. I'm sorry. was the vacations. I was saying that um, my mother, my sister and I had decided we was going to take my mother somewhere different every year. You know, I was talking to my mom this morning and I'm not trying to get too personal, but my mother has always been um, selfless. Okay. She's always uh, thought about other people. And sometimes I feel like um, I know the soft, my softer side comes from her. Her mother was nothing nice. You're talking about hard to the core. Um, she was beautiful, but she did not play. Okay. Um, but my mother has always been a soft, easygoing person. And so I always felt like, you know, people just one took advantage of her good nature. And I think that's why I've always kind of been hard. And, and I'm going to tell y'all how um, you have to be careful about stuff because I believe in evil forces. Whenever I've let my guards down, it seems like when I go, okay, I know I've been hard. I'm going to let my guards down and um, I'm going to let somebody get close to me and out the gate somebody do something <laughs> just, that do something that make me go. I knew I should not have opened my gate up. For them, I'm locking it right back, and ain't nobody else getting in. That's why I say we have to, we have to, we have to be very uh, careful about that, because there are evil forces sent uh, to keep you from being happy, right? Um, that's why you have to fight and decide to be happy. But I was telling my mother when I was talking to her this morning, I was like, you know, did you ever deal with, you know, some of the um, things that you dealt with in your childhood? Like my my grandmother, I uh, love my mother. I mean, she, hey, she she was just that type. Okay. Um, but in my mother's family, my great grandmother, which is my mom's mom, 
my mother's my grandmother's mother um had this thing about that and it was like that with all of her first cousins if you did not um if you got married and it was not you had a child already that that child was not going okay so when my my grandmother had my mother she was not married to my grandfather okay but she got married to another man when my mother was like six years old and my grandmother told her you cannot take her uh, my mother and her first cousins for uh a few years grew up right in the uh same house with my great grandmother because all of the first children that were not um that was uh, you know i guess out of wedlock or whatever <laughs> she said they ain't going because he might not treat them right i don't know she, those were older people that's the mindset they had that's the mindset my grandmother tried to have with me right because i remember I told my grandmother, my mom's mom, I was like, when my daughters were like 10, something like around it, they were not teenagers yet. I was like, you know, I think I want to get married. And I, so I, I remember my grandma saying, well, I don't think you want to get married right now. Wait until they get to be 18, because I know you don't want to have to leave your kids with me. And I said, uh, mama, because I called her mama too. My kids are going wherever I go. Okay. But that is something that happened in their, in in my mom's family because my grandmother's grandmother did the exact same thing right so that's why you have to also watch generational stuff right because you'll be thinking that it's just okay but all the time it's it's really not it's just generational habits and you don't even know why you're doing it right and people be looking at you crazy. Well, wait a minute. This is something that we've always done in our family. Okay. You be looking like the black sheep. No, but not me. My kids are going wherever I go. And whoever I get with, they're going to love them or else. You know? But that's the type of, of stuff that happens. So I was asking my mother. Um, I said, did you did you ever deal with, like, um, and my grandmother was very vocal about that. You know, um, did you ever deal with, like, um, seeing um my grandmother's uh first husband who was about 15 years older than her uh seeing how he did her and she was like you know what i don't think i did i think it traumatized me so bad because they had moved to new orleans and my grand my mother would go and visit right and one of the reasons that um is that my mother would go and visit and and she said you know i think about that because we went to biloxi and they was wanted to go into new orleans and i was like i never want to put my foot in louisiana again and she's felt that way since she was eight years old because she kind of uh, for some reason she can't separate what what her stepfather was doing to my grandmother as far as the you know what whatever it was that was going to abuse or whatever at that time with him being a lot older and her being a, a little girl and seeing that and she vowed when i get grown i'm never going to louisiana and so even you know um when i have friends in in new orleans that i, I like to go and visit and stuff a lot and she would always she used to always go i wish you wouldn't go into louisiana i would go why because i just I just don't want you to go into Louisiana. And it's because of the trauma. She has not been able to disassociate Louisiana from her, her, you know, her stepfather. And so when I was talking about her, talking to her about that this morning, she said, you know what? I, I haven't dealt with that. I have not dealt with that. And I, I think you're right. I do. I, I need to, to uh, deal with that um, because I think, you know, uh, seeing that it traumatized me, right? It traumatized her. And I, I, I think my mother is, she does not do a whole lot of talking and stuff. Um, she's always been very quiet and reserved and all of that. And I, I think, you know, um, seeing it, and my grandmother was uh, very vocal about, you know, being a, a young girl, okay? marrying a, a man of he might have been 18 years older than her at the back back then they did that it looked like they're doing it now too and um him being so jealous of her that he actually you know he actually shot her and tried to kill her right um and, and with my mother right there and it 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 kind of traumatized her right and so she was like you know what i do, i think i do need to deal with that right it, I, it traumatized my mother to the point where she was um i think it made her a real quiet person but my grandmother was strong 
okay she she didn't take no meds she didn't um she just she just did not right so it, whatever he was doing to it he he wasn't doing it and getting away with it okay because she, she was just as, she was just as strong as him but that's why i say you know um i was telling my mother though i said but you know what you got to do ma is you got to stop and I, I had i and i have a habit of doing this stop making everybody else stop carrying the emotions of everybody else put yourself first okay put yourself first don't let people call you and dump all of their garbage on you okay uh my mother is a very forgiving person okay and i told her you know i know you're a very forgiving person because you tell me i should be forget for forgiven okay but it's okay to feel whatever it is that you need to feel okay don't just make it obsolete feel it you're a human being feel it and it's okay to let it go right because he dead and rotten somewhere i remember to make a long story short, I remember I was taking my grandmother, this is like some years ago before she died, uh, to um, the doctor's office way down in like Hernando, Mississippi, right? And I remember there, there was a truck that just pulled out one, I pulled out of one of those old dirt roads and we didn't see his face or nothing. It was an old pickup truck. And my grandmother said, that's my, that's my first husband right there. And I was like, mama, how you know? You we didn't even see his face. She said, I know how he he tilted his head. That's my first husband. She had not seen him in 30 years. She said, I know that's him. I said, I'm gonna prove you wrong. Okay. I'm gonna prove you wrong. He pulled into a gas station. I said, I'm gonna get ready to go in here. When he got out before we she said, That's how he walked. I know that's him. But he was walking into the gas station. I went in there and I asked him, you know, uh, what what his was that was his name. He was like, yeah, that's my name. I was like, wow. So you used to be married to my grandmother. He walked out to see my grandmother after not seeing her for thirty years, y'all. When I tell you, they get it back. They get it back. He could not even hold his eyes up to look. He kept dropping his head. It was like he had a shake. This is a man who um, they said was always abusive to women, right? But but couldn't control that her. So I guess he gonna kill her because he couldn't control her. And um, he couldn't even look up at her, right? And he looked like, come to find out, they said he was living in his truck. They always get it back, right? But see, my grandmother didn't let that hold her back uh, because what she did was she went on and met another man who was absolutely wonderful that we considered our grandfather. He gave us everything, right? Okay, while wow, he suffered and lived in his truck and now he dead and rotten and gone. Okay. But my mother, I it, I think it put it scared her so bad that it just kind of made her her quiet. And that's why I was telling her, I was like, you know, when people they they love your good spirit, they know you're gonna pray for them, they they already know that you are, they know what you that you're gonna do that. Okay, they call you to dump all of your their heaviness off on you, and, and, and we're gonna get her because we know she's gonna pray for us and she's not gonna judge us because she does not judge people. And so she's left with that heaviness, that not caring about how her day was or anything like that. I said, drop the dead weight. Learn, drop the dead weight so that you can start ascending. Let that stuff go. We need to take, I was like, we need to take a trip to New Orleans so you can get past that. What happened then does not, does not, it's not affiliated with, with uh, New Orleans or Louisiana. It's no good ass just having to live in Louisiana and it should have died in there. Okay. But let that stuff go in a scene let that dead weight go it's okay not to answer your phone and that's why i'm saying you have to learn to let go of the dead weight relationships where, where people are jealous of you and they're wanting for you to compromise uh uh what you got going on just to make them feel bigger right okay learn to let that stuff go right because one thing for sure when somebody is for you you don't ever it, it, you, there ain't gonna be no kickback they're going to come in trying to do what is necessary to help you ascend more so that you all can vi uh, uh, vibrate on the same frequency, whether it's a friendship or intimate relationship or what. Just learn to drop the dead weight. I don't care how good the sex is, how good they look, any of that. If they're family members or what, if it's not conducive to your livelihood and to you vibrating up higher, 
ascending higher drop the dead weight and ascend because you can't move up with dead weight you just can't fly high with dead weight it's going to keep you on the on, on on ground level you're going to have to drop it so that you can ascend okay but anyways i was just thinking about that when i was riding home and I, the other day on sunday and um on monday and um when i was thinking about that i was like you know what i think i might do a video on it and i was sitting here thinking about that again you know hey but anyways you guys that's 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 what i want i wanted to do a little a little inspiration drop the dead weight get people about your life that's not conducive to, to your future let them go so that what is so that you can vibrate on the frequency that you sh you're supposed to be on so that you can intertwine with the people that you're supposed to meet and 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 not miss it because you're uh, allowed them to pull you down on a low frequency and what's for you flies right over your head okay always remember that but anyways i want you guys to please like share and subscribe if you would like to support the channel you could definitely support the channel via cash app